Well, well, well. Hey, hey, hey. Tasty Tuesday it is. I am super duper thirsty. And uh, it's been a good week, but a long one already. And time for a uh, little shenanigans. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are having fun, and uh, we're going to be taking a look at a distillery um, that most people, I'd say, are probably not familiar with. Only your well, um, thorough whiskey uh, folk, like we, uh, some of us on this channel, um, have had our few of Glen Goyne and uh, taking a look at that. Hey, Silver Lot, good to see you, man. What are you sipping tonight, uh, just out of curiosity? Hopefully you uh, were able to find yourself a wind going. We're going to be taking a look at a couple of different ones. Um, the first, I believe we're going to start with a sample from uh, Mr. Eric. And he was gracious enough to get the uh, the Teapot Batch 7, which is a specific uh, version. Um, it's a little bit uh, higher on the ABV. This one's 59.9, I believe. Yep, 59.9%. Pretty much almost a flat 60. That's pretty ridiculous there. 59.9, uh, man, that's insane. But that's good. And they'll also be looking at, uh, right afterward, the Glen Goyne 21, which uh, the ABV, unfortunately, is a lot lower on that, on this guy here. It's 43%. But with that said, let me double check and make sure. I'm not losing my mind. 43. It, I would prefer a 46, that's for sure. But um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully uh, it still uh, tickles the uh, iris. Hey, just closed up with Malt. Yep. And uh, good to see you there, Cohen. Daniel, good to see you, man. Dovetail in the class at the moment. Girl, Dovetail. Must be uh, a bourbon, I'm assuming. Molasses, really good to see you, man. It's been a while. Hope, uh, hopefully you were able to pick up uh, the Glen Goyne. I've only had the 10, 15, and 18-year-olds. Wasn't a big fan. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that and the reasons why in a bit. Good to see you, Richie Z. Oh, having uh, had the 21, 25, and two mediocre cast drinks in the bar. Cool. Hmm. I've had a decent cast drink before, but it. Uh, I don't know exactly what batch it was. I'll have to ask... Uh, um tosh uh if he uh which one he gave me i was at one of his uh, japanese um ramen bars in dc and i had that one i can't remember which version i've never seen the teapot dream here in chicago land yeah the it's not uh, normally available in the u.s you usually have to order it overseas uh that's the reason just pour the tambour let me get um let me get a maltis uh, invite before i forget Send away. Uh, Miss Porson Tam, dude. How about you? To uh, Mr. Daniel. Yeah, and that's, that's uh, ironically, the, these guys that own uh, Glen Coyne also are owned by the same uh, group. None, they're known as the Ian McLeod Distillers, and they do both Glen Coyne and they do uh, Tam, dude, which uh, is pretty interesting. I did not really, uh, I mean, I knew it before, but it didn't really click in my head until I was sitting down tonight and Doing a little extra research. Have an empty tin in the bunker 15, then open. Uh-oh. Hey, Stephen, good to see you, man. Glad you stopped by here. I'm sure you've had a decent Glen Goyne or two. What are some of your favorites uh, on the side, just out of curiosity? A blueberry banana smoothie. You must be a Californian, man. <laughs> it's scotch time. I got the Glen Goyne teapot dream of sample swap with Eric. Curious on how... This differs from the Glen Goyne cast strength. Yeah, it, I think you'll find that you'll enjoy it more, but we'll see. Oh, their cast strength sucks. Oh, there's Dustin. Good to see him, man. The regular cast strength, um, the bat, uh, it must have been like a, I don't know, like a early batch maybe, but I thought it was okay. Uh, I had it, it was in the bar setting, so it was hard to really, you know, sit down and get, you know, notes and, you know, really see how it stands up to other drams. But as an enjoyable sit down and a nice, you know, true whiskey bar that had lots to pick from, uh, doing the sample of it, I thought was was fairly decent. But and, and I I look for a pretty heavy mouth coat and you know strong and 
tasty and it was it was okay uh, it, it has been a while since i've had it so i will have to admit that nursing the dovetail oh missing tamdu yeah tamdu is a good one waiting for the batch eight wow yeah teapot it's a bit pricey or the uh yeah, I guess the cast strength ones are not doing that well. I have just two uh, incredible 19 year cast strength first full Rosso and a 15 year single cast cast strength port. Wow, that's a mouthful. Single cast cast strength port. <laughs> Say, try saying that a few times fast. But speaking of fast, <laughs> slides into the live stream. Tell the whiskey tech. How's it what is good, my friend? I was just uh, opening up the guys to a little fun we're having tonight with the old uh, Glen Goyne, uh, and I can't wait to uh, pop these open, man. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> you know it, buddy. I'm uh, putting. We're doing. Which one are we doing first? Because I'm gonna get one of them in the glass, ready to you go. You had you had marked to do the um, the teapot first. I don't have a preference. The only right. yeah, thing let's do is, the teapot. Yeah, the only thing is is the. The ABV is the only difference, but we can have a sip of water between them. It's not going to make, I think, a huge difference water, either way. <laughs> What'd you say? I What's water? water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you, buddy? Pretty decent, man. It's been a it's it's been a fast moving week. Uh, work's been picking up, but you know, no complaints. And uh, how about you? Good, hopefully. Yeah, can't complain. Can't complain. Everything's been. Uh, Solid. Um, unlike a lot of our friends across the country who are getting blasted with some serious storms and whatnot. Uh, um, I feel sorry for those guys, man. Relatively chill here in in Philly. Um, yeah, nothing I can really, uh, really uh, have to complain about. That's good. Um, yeah, nothing really here. Just uh, definitely excited to get sink our teeth into the old uh uh going going the um have you had a uh, lots of different ones as far as like we were a lot of people have uh lots yeah. of their own uh, opinions on them already i've noticed so do you, what, which some of your favorites and least favorites <laughs> yeah uh i have and the 21 is going to fill out my tour through the age stated core range uh i've not had the 21 um I have had the 10, the 12, the 15, the 18, the 25, and the teapot dram. And I do find Glen Goyne to be a bit hit and miss in terms of what I expect. I found the 10 to be not all that great. And for about five bucks more, I thought the 12 was like considerably better. Oh, yeah. I thought the 15 was better still, uh, which may or may not be discontinued. I'm not sure, but it's like in that $65, $70 range. I thought the 15 was fantastic. I thought the 18 was quite a letdown. Um, even after four or five months of oxidization, I just did not find that bottle getting much more interesting. I don't think it was that much better than the 15. Uh, so I was disappointed in the 18. It's competent and at a decent price is a good pour, but wasn't really my jam. Um, and then I have not had the 21 and the 25 is just absolutely killer, but it's crazy expensive nowadays. So uh, all across the board, um, when it comes to Glen, Glen Goyne, um, I have, of course, and I've had the teapot trim, which we're going to get into. So I'll withhold my feelings on that. But um, yeah, you know, uh, we, I brought this up a little bit on the happy hour and folks had, you know, varying opinions for sure on the, even my takes on Glen on the Glen Goins, let alone the people had different opinions on their favorite ones. Uh, it seems to be one of those types of whiskeys that, uh, you know, um, have you had the, uh, cast strength one by chance? Uh, I have, that is the one that I have not had. Uh, I have not had that. That seems to be kind of one of those love it or, or hate it type of drams. I noticed that Dustin was not a fan at all of it. I remember having it at a, a Japanese ramen bar that was a really good whiskey bar. And uh, my friend Tasha, he uh, was like, hey, you know, try this one. And, and I thought it was a pretty good sip. I mean, it's, it's hard when you're in a bar sitting and you don't really have a lot to base it off of and, you know, really go through the notes. But as far as uh, 
sit down in, in good taste, you know, it seemed like it was enjoyable. It wasn't like, you know, oh, you know, this is horrible or thin. It wasn't too thin on the mouth coat like some of the younger uh, Glen Goins with the lower ABV tend to be. So, Well, and that's just it, Telex. Um, and you've brought this up before. I totally agree with you. Uh, Glen Goyne suffers from what I think is just an incredibly thin delivery. Now, I felt the 12 and the 15 were better in that respect. And why I thought the cast strength actually might, you're sacrificing some age and maturity for higher alcohol, which hopefully would solve that thin, thin mouthfeel uh, kind of languid aspect of Glen Goyne. That's why um, I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I figured that's why you might have probably enjoyed it. I've not had it. I gotta give it a try at some point. It's same with like the Glendronic. I've not had the Glendronic cast drink either, but um, yeah, you know, uh, I would love to get my hands on it at some point and maybe just do a sample because yeah, I've just been kind of hit and miss on Glengoyne. Yeah, that's definitely one I would save your money and, and get get it either if you can find it at like a tasting or some sort of. Um, um, friend or you know if i ever get a bottle of it uh i'll definitely share it with you um not something I, I don't know if i would seek it out seek it out i, I probably would gravitate more towards the teapot versus the cast strength just because the teapot is is definitely special in its own way and we can get into the details of that in a little bit but the uh yeah, I'm, I'm so freaking looking forward to it. <laughs> they had an old, like, 17. I'd be curious if anybody's had that before. I, I never got to try that one, but... Um, yeah, the 15 was readily available for a while. Then it seemed like it was only available overseas, and now a lot of guys are saying it's discontinued. So, I, unfortunately, I think the 15 has gone away. And Andrew was wondering if that's the only one in the range that used American Oak. I'm not familiar enough to Ooh, know. I'm not sure either. That's a great question, though. If you uh, have access to things like Distiller or um, some uh, someone was giving me some information, uh, I forgot what the database was, but they told me that they uh, they had a source on something, and you can luckily find like a collective and go through and, and see uh, some of the stats on some of these bottles quickly. Quickly, if you uh, find them like a database or something. Yeah. Normally, teapot overcast drink any day. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much I think the. The, we definitely we all agree on that at least. <laughs> yeah, I can. I mean, I can only speculate, but yeah, I, I'm sure that's the case. Even with a double price, I mean, teapot dram unfortunately not available in the United States. It is something you got to get overseas, um, as far as I know. But you're right. It's, uh, there's yeah, we're on batch seven. I think batch eight will be or was last year or will be this year. I don't know. I'm not sure how it all works. I think it's a distillery only release type thing, but it's not like. They don't say it's a distillery only bottle, but I, you know, that's what I've read. In other words, it is not. Uh, it's it's limited in its in its uh, in the amount of it that they make, and it's not always easy to find. Um, I mean, we can we can hop into it if you wanna if you wanna get rolling on this. I can I can give the uh, tail of the tape here on the Glen Goyne uh, teapot dram if you want. Yeah, uh, the, the, I just want to, one last thing. Tin is all sherry, but if not sure if there's American or European, some bourbon in the uh, 12 to 15, not sure in the 18. The uh, 21 is going to be a first fill sherry, cat on the cast type. I think okay. that's that's the only uh, Yeah, I think all the yeah. guns have some sherry in them, right? Well, the 21 is matured exclusively in first fill sherry cast, so that makes a big difference on oh, that okay. particular one. But I'm not sure about the, looks like the previous ones had some uh, American. Uh, or European oak in some of them, which is good, you know. Yeah, most definitely. And then there's a 30 that, that Dustin was asking about. I'm not familiar with that one. I'm sure that one's quite pricey, uh, but it's a mix of first and refilled uh, on that one. What did you think about that, Dustin, just out of curiosity? Is uh, is it worth uh, the crazy price? I'm sure that it is. If the 25 usually one's, what, like 400 450 something like that, right? Eric, do you remember? 25, it? Yeah, the 25, I bought it for 330. Oh, wow, that's a great price. Two months later, it jumped up to at the same store for like uh, to 425. So I got lucky on that. Uh, it is all sherry, as far as I know. The 25 is, let me just uh, double check it here. I, I'm I pretty think sure you're right. it's all first, or it's all sherry, as far as I understand. Yeah, exclusively in sherry. I don't know if it's first fill or not. Probably not. 
That would be. It might really be. Cool. Let, let me see. I can I can look on the side too and see if there's something I can find on the twenty five. Yeah, uh, first fill. Yeah, this first fill sherry oak is specifically how they labeled it on the twenty five. There. There you go. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll have to get into that one at some point in time. We'll do another Glenn Going show. <laughs> yeah, the twenty five. It. it I, I'm. I know that that one's uh, not chill filtered. On this twenty one, I was trying to determine if it was or not, and that was one of the things that I thought was harder to figure out. And I think since it's not something readily in your face, it probably is chill filtered, which could be kind of a thing we might have to ding in on. But that's later down the road. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. All right, let's take a look at it. Go ahead and tell the tail of the tape of this uh, teapot. Right, let's uh, sink so, our teeth into it, man. I love that color. It. So we are the first tasting tonight in our Glen Goyne show. It's going to be Glen Goyne Teapot Dram. This one in specific is Batch 7. A couple things to note about this. Um, it does come in the – well, this is the old they, – they have changed their labeling uh, and their branding recently. I don't know if anybody has seen the new Glen Goyne stuff, but this is still the older – the one from, you know, up until 2020. So here's the story about Teapot Dram. Um, this is the advertising, and this is what they mean by Teapot Dram. Until the 1970s, Glen Goyne workers enjoyed a thrice daily dram that uh, flowered from a bashed copper teapot in the distillery canteen, uh, recreated by men with a vague recollection of those days our tribute has swaths of red apple. Blah, blah, blah. So in other words, this is supposed to be harken back to the straight from the cask whiskey that was put into this copper teapot that the folks who worked at Glen Goyne were able to go and get a taste of. Um, and that's natural color, right? Well, so that's a great point. So think about uh, Glen Goyne is all of their whiskeys are natural color. Um, I don't think there's any exceptions to that. Um, if there are, let me know in the chat, but I'm, they... They are all natural color. However, they chill filter pretty much everything that they do. However, the teapot dram here is not natural color and non-chill filtered. This is all first fill Oloroso and bottled at cast strength 59.9% ABV. And that is essentially the tail of the tape here on the Glen Goyne teapot dram. Now, I will mention that this is a whiskey that is pretty much a UK exclusive. I don't think that there yeah. is ever a release in the United States. And if there is, uh, let me know where. But um, They're not. You're right. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. This is something you got to get. A price range on this, you're looking at anywhere from around, uh, I mean, it really depends probably in the 130 140 to upwards of a little over $200 range. It's so worth that, definitely in the 130 to 150. I think it's definitely worth in that range by the easy. Yeah, range. yeah. So you're looking at, you know, no age statement, um, but it is a non-chill filtered natural color. And then in, in the case of this batch 007, this is the James Bond release. It is 59.9%. Uh, and, you know, the first fill of the Rosso Sherry, I mean, it is, if that's not evident on the color of this, I mean, this is just huge. Yeah, Glen Goins are, are definitely more known for their sherry, it looks like, uh, influence than anything else. Kind of like, it uh, reminds me a lot like of Glen Tronic or Glen Farkless, those kind of guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the one thing I thought that was really interesting about this when studying these guys recently was that even though it's it's a, uh, a what we consider a highland distillery, they do all their matur maturation in the lowlands. It's, it's right. right on the border, and it's like... It's so funny because when I now I just learned that today really because I never really studied much about the distillery, but it kind of makes sense because now I know why the Vladnock Adela is such a good sherry whiskey. It's also a lowland, and I bet you they're probably I, I have to look on the map, but I would guess they're probably pretty close in the uh, climate sphere because somehow these lowland distilleries are able to pull out some really good sherry sometimes too. Yeah, for sure, sure, for sure. yeah. Yeah, Glen Goyne is interesting in that sense. And, um, yeah, like some people actually say that the style of Glen Goyne, which may speak to that, that uh, uh, like, you know, languid kind of light flavor, uh, at least in terms of the – not flavor, but the viscosity, is very similar to a triple distilled lowland Irish-style whiskey. So, like, um, there may be some – 
influence with that, but who knows. I will tell you off the bat, I did a swirl around the glass. This is sticking more than I've ever seen any whiskey stick before. I actually have a oh, yeah. green glass here, which is super meta, but it still hasn't dripped down. <laughs> it's still yeah, same, same here. Man, like, same here. And, that, 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 and that one, 9, man. It's slow. Like I'm starting to slowly see some legs. I mean, this is this one. I swear I did this over two minutes ago. I got one that's moved maybe a, a, a centimeter, a millimeter maybe. I mean, this is sticky, icky, icky, if there ever is one. And uh, since this is my pour, you know, you are uh, you are free to kick things off with the nose, my friend. This is, I will say right off the bat, um, and, and this is, goes for all, even some of the lower aged, like the 10 to 12, the 15, 17 area. This has got some of the best nose characteristics I've ever gotten off of the blend going. Because the first like two three notes I get are so different than what you would think on a really good sherry, but in a, not in a bad way. It's just complex. The first thing I got was like a tea bag and then went tobacco. Interesting. With some like cinnamon spice. It's so nice and thick and heavy. Oh man. I uh, that, here comes yeah. the wave of red fruits too. After that, big <laughs> time. Ahead, Heavy, dry red fruits. I mean, which tells me there's probably some age in this. Um, which, you know, one thing you can tell with NAS whiskeys is speci specifically sherry, uh, sherry ma matured. If you get a lot of the dry fruits, that signifies that it's probably got some older stuff in it. Because, you know, that only comes, the, the, dry, the dry note, the dry fruit notes come from oxidization. And so... I'm getting a decent amount of that on here. Obviously, we don't know how old this is, but I, I'm telling you, there's a ton of it. There's a nice mustiness to it, like almost like a warehouse. Not, you know, like maybe go as far as to say Dunnage Warehouse. It's damn and, close if it's not, though, man, because it does remind me a lot of the spring break kind of a nose to it. Yeah, a little bit, right? Totally. Um, I'm not getting the tea bag as much, but definitely getting that cinnamon. And I am getting also a nice wave of like French vanilla custard kind of thing. What about tobacco? Aren't you getting like a thick wave yeah, of tobacco? Definitely the tobacco. Oh, man. I love that. It's like a, a, uh, a friend of mine, uh, a friend of my show uh, who just got a sample of this relatively recently, I believe, is in the chat. Yeah, Andrew Page is drinking this with us tonight. So, Hey, Andrew. I get some like light brown sugar, too. Yeah. Oh man. A lot of dry fruit though. A lot of lot of dry fruit. Yeah, you can tell even if it's an NAS, uh, there is no way that this has not got at least some ten to twelve in there. I mean, I'd yeah. be surprised if, if I, it definitely does not nose like something that's seven and younger, if you know what I mean. It definitely Agreed. doesn't feel yeah, that it's way. It's not sprightly. Like it, it smells like an older whiskey. Wow. Oh, now the grapes are coming through. Really great nose. Grapes with uh, like white grapes and red grapes. I, I'm still just mesmerized. Literally, when I swirl this around and it creates a new a new line of where the whiskey reached, it's almost looking like it's cracking the glass because it doesn't move. It's literally yeah, it's solid. Solid lines across the glass. I, I I've never seen anything like that before, and honestly, not noticed in previous trams of this. I mean. This is this is as oily and sticky as it gets. This is definitely not for any basic or or I would say like under um, experienced dram drinker. I mean, if you haven't ever went like around fifty to fifty five percent, don't even come this way because <laughs> it is fifty nine point nine. We're talking sixty percent, which is one hundred twenty proof alcohol here. It's no joke, <laughs> yeah. but. It definitely doesn't. It it's a really beautiful nose because you you can nose it all day and it never like burns the senses really. Do you get a little bit of a on the edges? A little bit of a lime note. Yeah, Here, lime, almost like um like not not the aggressive citrus like key lime pie. Like yeah, more like a effervescent like the the lime um, yeah. zest like a yeah. zest from a lot of, I get a ton of that just that that fresh creamy coldness of that oh I'm also getting like some really thick figs and raisins now with it too yep 
like t toffee pudding, man. It's, it's it's amazing how you can almost nose the treacle, like the molasses on it. It's so freaking thick. <laughs> I'm gonna. See, I'm just gonna do a quick and see what and, uh, Andrew is picking up. Uh, yeah. Before we dive in, that was his last. Uh, does have a great nose. A less less spiky than the Glen Goyne uh, cast strength. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That is one thing I will agree that, uh, and I think that maybe that's why Dustin was a huge, not a, not a huge fan of the cast strength. Was it does have a hot nose on it? You can definitely get the yeah. menthol in it. It's it's like right in your face. Got, and I guess a lot of that thinness might be, you know, some of that might come out more with, with a you know nose like that. Man, I, I I hate to belabor this, but just looking at the legs on this, I keep smiling because it's just like holy. Shit. Yeah, it's, it's the slowest. really impressive. It's really impressive, and that color is just incredible. Just like a nice, it's like mahogany, just beautiful, beautiful. I love the fact that you know when you get a Glen Goyne bottle, you know it's natural color, no matter what it is. So that's kind of a big press. Hopefully, they get to the on the craft side. Hopefully, they'll start taking note of hey, maybe we shouldn't chill filter the shit out of everything either. Yeah, <laughs> well, there you go. I think you know if if they hear of it enough out and about, they'll probably get the message they needed. Kind of, I hope so. Know, I mean, I just it much. if you if you twisted my arm, I'd rather have fake color and non-chill filtration. But uh, you know, at least they got one of them right. Exactly. You ready to roll here? <sighs> Yeah, I love this. I love that the, the nose is so good. I can even get the spice kick from the nose, man. Like caliente, like hot peppers. I can sense yeah. it. It's totally crazy. Man. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, man. Cilantro, man. Happy Tasty Tuesday. All neat. Ooh, my. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You can't tell me that's not intense, buddy. <laughs> Wow, that's good intense though. Woo. That will make I mean if you can't taste that, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> oh man. Wow. That is intense. It I mean that's like is your mouth. <laughs> it's like frozen. <laughs> stunning, man. Stunning. There you go. It just drenches. Mmm. It in a good way, but man, it's so intense. It almost needs a couple of drops just so you can pick yeah. some like more notes out of it. But man, it's really good neat though. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not bitching. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there Ooh, with you. I mean, I'll let you do your palate, uh, your taste oh, first, and yeah. then pile on. But it was so intense that I, ha I, I have to have yeah. a. a, a one little mini sip because I, I I got so many notes right off the bat, but then I got the weight of alcohol afterward, and I'm like, whoa, that's a kind of a crash there. But let's see. Mm. It's funny. I, all the things I was getting off the nose, I'm getting on the palate with the the raisins, a little bit of, of almost like a. A cigar, kind of a, a chewed cigar, kind of a um, taste with some grapes, red grapes, strawberries, raspberries. It's got a, it's got like a, a pepper, but it's it's more of the sh like brown sugar than the pepper side. It's interesting that there's no bourbon in this. Yeah, because it, it 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 has like a ex bourbon feel to it. Reminds you a little bit of the. Uh, you remember the conversations that were had about Glen Scotia Fifteen and how that had no sherry in it. Uh, this one, it's a little surprising. There's no bourbon. Exactly. That's wild, man. Because yeah, the. Um, huh. Yeah. I'll tell you the the. I love the sweet balance with this. This arrives heavy and forceful, and this is, you know, paradoxically compared to a cast strength whiskey I was having on the happy hour. This is something that I I think almost demands water. It's very intense, dry fruit, creamy, vanilla, toffee, 
brown sugar, as Telex was alluding to, there's like a nice kind of marzipan almond thing going on too. And yeah. then the dry fruits. And I'm telling you, this smells like a Christmas potpourri. Like it, that's the taste. Like you walked into a room and it's got the dried cranberry, the clove, the stuff that's just kind of sitting out, just wafting through the air. It is a huge, huge event on the palate, but it is too intense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say it. For me, this is too intense. I the spice kick that you get on the later part of the development and the finish is so aggressive. It is chili. The pepper, pepper came in after too. Um, wow, chili pepper. It is black pepper. It is cinnamon, hot cinnamon. It, it it and then you get a nice drying finish, which is great. It's still juicy. Vanillas, some caramel paste. Is we might be losing malt here. Yeah, it does need uh, a couple drops of water, which I think I'm going to go to right now. Yeah, the it, it just I just put a couple on, and the good thing is before the the finish was almost too much of that alcohol wave that menthol that came in through, yeah. but now with a couple of drops, I really can get into the finish in it and the finish for me is a lot more of the hazelnut and amaretto and the marzipan yeah. wave afterward which is really nice oh man yeah this really i'm getting a lot more black cherry now mm -hmm. wow yeah like a black cherry cordial it's got yeah. some chocolate in there too yeah. Well, not as much cordial for me. I, I, I really feel like it's it's like uh and, the, and I'm not, I'm gonna say this in a positive way, but it's not gonna sound it. It's like the like Robitussin, you know, like like that type of cherry. I'm not getting as much of the chocolate as I am just the like forceful cloying in your face cherry, well, but it's not artificial like a like a Robitussin, but it's that level of intensity. How about like a good cherry cordial liqueur, like a combination oh. of of the of all three kind of together. Yeah, like Campari. Say again. Wow. You broke yeah. you broke up. I could I couldn't hear that. What'd you say? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I I was just I think I was just agreeing with you. I I think I'm really excited to try to taste this again. Gary says love black cherry. I totally agree. Uh Telex or uh, Andrew Page said, yeah, explosion of flavors. Are you getting citrus too? Yeah, burst in the drop. Yeah, I got lemon. Or I'm not sorry, lemon. Lime. I got lime. For me, I just and got a I, combination of that with, with with without the water. It was <laughs> I agree. Really, with this is so funny. Andrew Page said uh, this really coats your throat like cough syrup, but in a much better way. Yeah, I didn't even see that, but that's exactly what I was just saying, brother. Yeah, it, like that's exactly right. It's exactly right. The um. What was I going to say? Um, shoot. The, um, I just lost my train. <laughs> the um, Oh, the citrus level, yes. Before the water, I got mostly lime like Eric was saying, but then uh, after the water, now I'm getting like a combination of oranges and lemons together for some reason. And it's like an aftertaste part of the finish for me. Yeah, I'm hearing you on the oranges. Mm. It's it, it is much better with the water and and I will agree it's it's almost like it's necessary because it is so hot when that finish mm -hmm. you can't really enjoy it like you want to on the oh, before. Yeah. I'll tell you. I mean, maybe maybe if you've already had a few dreams and you're coming to this like after a few, right. you're, it might be different. But if you're coming in first you know, a couple of drams in, you definitely got to have a little water. I am um, with you on that. I mean, there might be, I mean, this may be young ish. Who knows? I don't know. Um, which is why it's so hot on the arrival, but it is almost 60% hard to tell. I will tell you this much water transforms this. I mean, this, the water on this is necessary. Uh, it's necessary. It tastes, this whiskey becomes a whole different animal with water it's take like I put about three drops on. It has taken off that heat edge so much. I wasn't getting as much of an alcohol burn as I was just the intense spice note. 
oak spice and the pepper. Man, with water, this has, it's gotten creamier, stickier. If it could be stickier, it is. It's a much more enjoyable ride, which is, again, fine for me. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to knock this for that in any way, but no, no. man. Yeah. That it, is. It's, it's amazing how little water this needs too. You only need like a couple of drops for it to really, I was afraid I was going to take me like a spoonful or something, but it didn't take much for it to tame it down a little bit. Is that the same for you? Mm hmm. Mm. Mm. What about you, Andrew? What do you think on um, on the finish? Do you get with without water? Do you get the citrus versus without? Do you get the lime before the water? Do you get the orange lemon afterward? What's some of uh, your take? You guys' palates are going to be shot drinking that forty three percent. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a chip and uh, a big glass of uh, regular water, and, and it'll it'll be fine. It, I, I think you know that initial sip was was intense, but with the water, it's uh, it's actually a pretty easy drink now. You know, for me. Mm. Hey, Dram, good to see you, man. Are you still at work? Hopefully not. What, uh, what are you sipping tonight, uh, Dram? Are you, you got a hopefully you got a Glen going yourself? Hmm. Yo, okay, Eric. I am. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Dealing with some unsavory BS. Um, oh, sorry, man. No, that's okay. The you know it happens. Um, I will say that this. Mm. I always notice a difference when you add water to a whiskey for the most part. There are some that don't change much and some that change for the worse, some that change for the better. This this exponentially changes for the better. Yeah. It's a complete it's almost a completely different whiskey. This is reminding me a lot more now of like an Edger Dewar or a Val Balvenie, heavily sherried. Um it's it's really fantastic. Um I, I yeah, there's just not enough there's <laughs> I, I don't know. I like, I'm, I don't know what else to say other than just wow. Like, I can't believe this is a Glen Goyne, given my experience with Glen Goines before. Yeah, and that's the cool thing about some of the, uh, I mean, this is why I appreciated the cast strength a little bit more than their usual stuff, is because it was, this one's definitely better, but I, I preferred the cast strength than I do the typical, like, the, you know, the, the, the 18 and the, Fifth, you know, some of the in the middle of the road ones that were thin, you know, it definitely with the higher ABV for me, I think it, it helps Glen going a whole, whole lot. Anything above like, you know, 43% is, is yep. a tremendous big advantage. Yep. The citrus wasn't carrying through the finish, but I didn't get it in there. Say again? Yeah, I didn't feel like it did either. Agreed with you. Yeah, seems to be like the, yeah, I agree. Water on this changes it dramatically. Again, though, I, I still am a bit it's beguiling how there's no bourbon in this. Yeah, because that, that that finish does it have a coffee. coffee. Yeah, yeah, toffee, big time. It's thick too. It's like it's verge of treacle molasses kind of toffee. And you would you would think you wouldn't get that much out of a sherry, but maybe it's such a maybe because it's first fill, maybe it's got some characteristics that mat like uh, I don't want to say mask, but like uh, imitate maybe a really good bourbon cask. I don't know. Have you experienced that before other than the Glen Scotia reverse deal where you've had, oh, I think this has got to have sherry in it and it doesn't. Do you have you felt this way about um a first full sherry that tastes like a bourbon before? I, I can't think of one off the top of my head. I'm I'm trying to think. Like let us know in the comments if you think can think of one too. If you can think of a really good sherry scotch that tastes like damn, it's gotta have a bourbon cask in it. You want to know something, man? And this is gonna probably sound way out of left field, but you wanna know what this kind of reminds me of profile wise? Like a like a heavily sherry Buna Hobbit. 
No, it's not, you nailed it. It's like it's like if, if there was a cast strength version of the 18, it would taste yeah. a lot like this. Yeah. Right? Like it has some of that muskiness, that old bookstore kind of quality to it. And no peat, but still has a little bit of like just kind of aggressive, slightly smokiness. But it's very much in the background, and it's clearly there just on virtue of the barrels they use. It's probably sulfur, but I'm not picking it up that way because it's so slight. Like it reminds me of a yeah, yeah. This is definitely more in the smoky for me than the sulfuric because this yeah. one doesn't have any. Even though we do detect that antique kind of Dunnage Warehouse thing, this doesn't have that funkiness that you get like off of the Bomar 15 Darkest or the. Uh, the Nevis 10, it, sometimes those have, you know, some more of the sophilic max stick, like the, the Highland Park 12 kind of has it a little bit. But this is more of like a really solid quality sherry, but it's so intense as to the point of like, oh man, I don't know. I, I've never had anything quite like it before. And that, maybe that's what makes it the teapot dream so special. I mean, isn't, the, isn't this the one where the distillery workers get a little sample of what they've like over time, they, they get a little sample from the the main, um, what do you call it, the uh, cask or whatever that they're working with, the vat. Yeah, right, right. Mm. There's something to be said about that. I'm surprised we don't see that happen at a lot of other uh, of the other uh, places, especially around the island around there, because uh, they definitely have a, a real – big communal feel, community feel to how they, you know, lead their lives. You, when it kind of reminds me of when you look back at the Art Big uh, Kill Dalton, when they um, sold that, they took the proceeds and they were helping all the, the Isla workers with the money that they made off of that, uh, that round. There's sometimes they do that kind of thing. And uh, I think it shows, you know, it, it definitely comes out in quality when they take their time and do something, you know, right. Yep. Ah, oh, man. Delicious stuff. I would love to try some other batches of this, as I imagine that they're all as stellar as this. But this is this is stellar, in my opinion. I, I'll let you have the first word on it. But, um, yeah. This is definitely also favorites of my old friends uh, I met through the, uh, the Scotch for Dummies, uh, KB and, and uh, Bob H. Uh, they're up in New York and New Jersey. And uh, when we went to visit them, one of the favorites that uh, KB loved to buy. He's a big Deanston fan as well. But if it wasn't, if he wasn't talking about Deanston, he was talking about the Glen Glen Teapot Dram, and it and actually it, it definitely goes to show if you're a fan of high DV, you like complexity because this has got lots of notes in it. If yep. you're not hung up on age. In, even if you're, and even if you are, this definitely, like Eric says, this has got like some older stuff. I'm pretty sure in it. Uh, I would not be surprised if there's ten to twelve year old stuff, maybe even fifteen. But I do think that they do have some younger stuff in here that's giving it some of the other notes that we were pulling out with, you know, some of the citrus side and, and some of the uh, more menthol and um, the intensity of it. I think has. Uh, the youth's coming through there, but it's solid, man. Uh, it, it, you know, the only thing that would help a dram like that, and I know it's not built for age, but that's like the only thing you could really, really, I wouldn't say bitch about it, but that's the only thing you could really change to maybe make it a little better. You can't really screw with the ABV. It's already 60 practically. It's first yeah. little sherry. It's, uh, it's, it's, Beautiful, you know, uh, even though it's not like high frills marketing, it's it's solid marketing where you see this, you know, it's quality. It's they, they do a good job, I think, on the boxes and yep. the, the tubes and all that. And I'd say comparatively, it's definitely above average, in my opinion. Um, it does. It does depend on the water a little bit. I, I don't think I yeah. should. Not that, but it is something for not a, a, a new drinker, like I said earlier, too. I'm going to say this is definitely at least a, a 4 to 4.25. Oh, man. Without the uh, 
I mean, it, I guess it depends on how much do you really need each to have an effect in your whiskey to, to really enjoy it. And, and this is a really good yeah. example of that you really don't have to depend on age. So I'm going to give it a 4.25 out of 5. I think it's solid, man. Yeah, really good score. I'm uh, I'm going to put a little 12 in the glass for a transition. Um, I, uh, I, I, I agree with pretty much everything that you've said. I think this is really, really good and is probably if you take price into consideration despite having to have it shipped from the uk is the best glen going you can get price contingent which means i think the 25 is a better whiskey probably light years maybe not light years but it's a it's a better whiskey but it's also at least 300 dollars or 200 to 300 dollars more um if you're gonna go with a glen going and you want to really taste what this distillery can do I don't think that you're going to get it. Well, the 21 is still to be determined, but I think you're going to get the best that they have to offer out of this teapot dram. Um, I think in that 170 to 160, you know, 80, 90 price range, whatever, maybe cheaper, maybe a little bit more, um, is fair for what you're getting here. Uh, I'm sure, you know, batch variation is a real thing when it comes to this stuff. But at the end of the day, uh, this is a stellar whiskey, man. Um, the thing about it is, is it so good that I would reach for this over some other things that are first fill heavy sherry bombs, thinking Balvany 15, thinking, uh, you know, Glen Farkless 15 maybe even, or, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like this is a whiskey that like you, you, you experience once. It's not a, not a multiple sipper for me. It's just so much. Um, I'm not going to take that away from a score, but I just want to put that out there as my personal opinion. There's, it, it's just, there's just so much happening here that, like, you know, it's a whiskey that demands your attention. I'm going to go with a with a solid four out of five on this. I mean, I think this is worth pick, picking up if you're a sherry fan. I mean, if you're a fan of good scotch in general, like, this is worth picking up. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll sit at the four out of five. Uh, I, I quite like it. I don't know if I'm going to replace it uh, necessarily. I'll probably look for the next teapot dram I can get. And if it's at a price that seems reasonable, I'll grab it. Um, but there are alternatives out in the world, you know, which is why I was like struggling between three, seven, five and a four, just because I'm like, eh, you know, there are some other ones out there, but I do think this is, this competes with the Balvany 15 single cask sherry. I do think that this is, you know, this could go toe to toe with Abrila or Abuna and probably has more complexity. Um, oh actually, yeah, it has more complexity. You know, uh, this is way better than the Highland Park cast drink, in my opinion. I, I just, yeah. So I'm gonna. I, I, I was between a three seven five and a four. I think I'm gonna sit at the four. Um, really good stuff is probably the best showcase of Glen Goyne price considered uh, that you're gonna find uh, from a distillery that I think is. You know, hit and miss for some folks. So, four from uh, Malt Muser, four point two five from Telling Us the Whiskey Tech on the Glen Goyne Teapot Dram Batch 07, 007, the the James Bond batch. Uh, I'm there you go. with a. Um, I'm going to transition over to get ready for this twenty one, which I'm going to put in the glass right now, with a uh, a glass of the Glen Goyne twelve, which I picked up recently, um, and I really actually am impressed with. The, uh, yeah, I'll pour it a little bit. One thing I want to mention really quick. I know that our friend uh, Andrew Page, who should be in the chat, um, has been drinking this as well. I'd be curious kind of what his final thoughts are. Uh, this is him right here. Uh, I've had the Glengoyne 21 about a year and a half ago. really like it, but this is much more distinctive and interesting. So he prefers the teapot over the 21. So there you go there. Cool. Well, interesting to know. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That you know says something. I'm gonna get the. I'm getting the 21 in the glass as we speak. <laughs> Dustin says you can fix all Glen Goins with just adding peat. <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, you could you, if if you don't like something, you could always add a little peat. If uh... <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think Glen Goins. I, I that. I, yeah, I get. I take the point. I'll tell you though. Oh, they were talking. Sorry, they were talking. I took it out of context. They were talking about the. Uh, the uh, fact that uh, Stephen was uh, after drinking all this unpeated sherry that he felt like he wanted to have uh, 
some ex bourbon art bag for some reason. That's what brought this up. Sorry. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm going to tell you, man, this Glen going 12, I'm really impressed with this compared to the 10. And I know that there were some folks in the chat who thought it was crazy and that the 10 punched above its weight, but I, I really found it to be kind of a try before you buy kind of nah, 2.5 type whiskey. Yeah. This one is probably more 3.25. That one's uh, 43%, right? Uh, yes, correct. Natural yeah. color, color filter, probably. The the ten. Do you remember if it was forty or do you remember what the ABV oh, yeah. on it was? I bet that was the difference. Maybe no. No, the going going uh, ten was forty three, I believe. Oh, okay. Let me just hmm. double check, but I'm I'm pretty sure. I I just yeah, it didn't, it didn't do much for me. The uh, reason why I didn't get into the earlier going goings uh, like the. Uh, the 10 and the 12 was usually because of AVV. 43 out yeah, of the 12, I see. Let me see what they have for the, uh, if they have the old 10 in here. 14, 30. I know they had it at one point. There we go. Yeah, it's also 43%. Yeah, th those, those, I think the, maybe I had the 10 and I didn't have the 2. I know I had one. It was extremely thin feeling. I don't remember if it was the 10 or the 12. Mm -hmm. um, the 15 is is outstanding. It's, it goes down as one of the best Glen Goyne releases ever done. I agree. That's also 43% as well. I think it's better than the 18. Yeah, that that's one. That's like the black sheep of the older ones. It seems like is that the uh, it's first the the eighteen is both first and refill sherry casts. Maybe the refills are so dead that maybe it just doesn't come through very well. Languid. Yeah. I, again, it was two years ago that I had it. I would revisit it. I'm just not willing to buy a bottle of it again. Yeah, that's why I skipped the eighteen and went to the twenty one because I thought, well, if I can have all first fill versus first and refill and sometimes refilled cherry casts as we know with one farkless could be really really refill so you know it does make a big difference with some of those <laughs> agreed i forgot to add i mean you know, i realized we forgot to do something in the beginning of our show did you oh. get, have you gotten anything new uh since we last talked last week i realized we did not uh go over that <laughs> I uh, mentioned, I think, already that I did pick up the um, – one second. Let me get my uh, – oh, there. I already have my form up here. I did get the uh, the dark and the light uh, from Holland Park and the fire. I still have to pick up the ice uh, at some point. But nice. I did get the uh, – they, wow. they, they still have the, the, the ice available for me. They're holding it, so I will, I will have it. But we got a fire, a, a light, and a dark definitely already here. And I've already, I've already stepped a little around at all of them. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Oh man! And they are, they are, oh, they're pretty damn good. I cannot wait. They're pretty damn good. So I, I think that you'll uh, be happy on on the uh, pickup on, on those, and also the uh, we've got the uh, the old Pony eighteen. I'll be getting to you. That's Ooh, nice. That's Spayburn twenty five. I still got to get to you. The I uh, super Spayburn. I haven't been able to find a Spayburn anywhere. I need to find another Spayburn to do. I'll. Uh, I have a connection that I'll, I can hook you up on the side with that. That's no problem. Cheap, like, yeah, like a twenty year old or, or a ten year old or something. I'd love yeah. to try this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they have a even have a fifteen. That's really really good. I've had before. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'll see if I can uh, get because thankfully theirs are pretty well priced, so you don't have to. They're, they're owned by the same guys that do Anok, so if you like Anok, you'll probably be in for a bit of a treat. Great. Um, let's see. We talked about the uh, little, a couple little ones that came in with the Deanston Virgin Oak and the Akintoshian American Oak on the side, but yeah. those are. Uh, the, I think that you'll like the the the, the Virgin Oak from Deanston a lot. That one surprised me of how uh, good that one stands up for other ones. But uh, that's all at the moment. We got to talk uh, also about meeting up too on the side here to get. Uh, yeah, definitely. Some... I've got a uh, I got a couple things in since we last talked. Um, so this one, which. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Uh, this is Art Bag Day. Oh, committee oh. release 2012. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to get into this. Uh, I did already have some, and uh, I, I'll, I'll just wait to hear what you have to say about it. Um, oh, man, you're gonna do that to me. That's <laughs> pretty fantastic. Uh, we'll talk about that at some point in time soon. Um, I've also got the uh, the new Bunahav and Moynya Fiesel 2020, which is the uh, Amontillado. So we'll we'll get into that for sure. Um, that one's going to be a lot of fun. Um, oh, and I got the Kalila Fiesel 2020, which nice. was in, like a 16 year old or something like a triple matured. So we'll be able to mess around with those. Uh, nothing. Maturation. That sounds cool. For I don't know Kalila got into that kind of thing. Yeah, actually. I know, right? Um, that's it. Um, Damn, look at all those ball players behind you. Jesus, man. <laughs> look at all those ball players behind you. Those are nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the 92nd release, the 99, 03, 05, and then an 05 single cast, which I know that nice. we're going to do at some point. Wow. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know they had single cast for that release series. Yeah, That's awesome. it was a special thing from a, a liquor store in D.C. Um, I have to send it to you. This guy who owns it is freaking amazing. you got to meet him. He, um, yeah, he does a ton of picks of, I mean, even a lot of bourbon, but a lot, he does some scotch stuff too. Really good dude. Um, yeah, we'll talk about it offline, but he, uh, I kind of remember the name of his shop now, but Hey, I'm going to uh, run and get myself a little bit more water and, uh, take a quig and then, uh, we'll talk Glen Glen 21. Sure thing. And if you guys got the going 21, you better be pouring it now. So we're getting ready to take a look at that here in a second. Let me scroll up here and catch up with some comments with you guys. Try the Highland Park single cast stuff. Those are sherry monsters. The regular cast strength batch one is not really a good comparison. Batch one cast strength is light sherry. Okay. Single cast, cast strength. Yeah. You don't need much peat. Even McKellen and Glenn Farkles have a touch of peat. Yeah. That's true. There is uh, even more heavily heavily peated Bunahavens. Um, some of the Moines I know were up there. They have heavily peated malts. I wasn't sure how far they go in the PPM. Uh, if they go as do they, uh, Dustin? Do they go as high as like? Uh, I know your Lafroigs and your Ardbegs are around thirty to forty PPM. Once you get to like the hundreds, it's kind of. Uh, pretty intense. The Octomores are from like 160 to 250, somewhere around there. I know they can be higher, but uh, are they – Did how high do these guys do when you say heavily peated? I'm just curious. When your scale, I would go for four out of five, two, and probably rate the 21 the same, but I would pick up the teapot drain before getting another 21. Yeah, I think the ABV is going to be the, uh, the kicker. But I'm going to make sure that Malt drinks a big glass of water before he does this uh, 21 sip. That's for doing sure. doing it right now. Uh, he's doing it right now. Let me, let me put him back in here. Yeah, we, I was just telling him that. Uh, I forgot to I was, mention something to you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I'll definitely have a little chip and a, and a big swig of water before we go into this other one because the ABV difference is going to be pretty noticeable, mm -hmm. I have a feeling. You know, I'm actually drinking some Glen Glen 12 to kind of reset the palate. I forgot to mention something else that I got, Telix, which oh. is going to be perfect for the Kill Holman show with your Jack Rose picks. Behold, Ooh. USA exclusive batch three, triple matured. It is 50% port, 47% bourbon, and 3% sherry. So it is, dude, look at the, I have to show you the color of this because you are going to shit. I know you, how much you love port. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> port and sherry and bourbon, you said? Yeah, man. It's, you know what they've done? They've almost like, you know how we, we really enjoyed the Amburic, the mess that they did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet you this is like probably them trying to fine tune it and make it even better. Because that, I have to admit, dude, I'm not a huge fan of port. Uh, scotch influence, but that Alburic was the shit. Yeah, man. It was awesome. I figured this would get you excited. So there's only uh, 1,260 bottles in this in this small batch release. Oh, man. You got to save that box for me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is 48.9% uh, ABV. So nice. it's a natural cast strength, I believe. Well, they don't say it, but... That sounds about right. I mean, because I have seen cast strength. Right? 
I have seen cast strength, even though it's not above 50, I have seen cast strength as low as uh, 46 even on like really older uh, yeah, whiskeys. But you never know. Five is a great example of that. That's awesome, man. That's a that's a great pickup. Yeah, where did you where did you end up finding? Did you have to go online to get it, or did you get it local? Oh, it's, it's from a place right in your neighborhood. Uh, so if you want a bottle, you'll be able to find it. It's about seventy bucks. Potomac Wine and Spirits, my friend. Oh yeah. Man. See, yeah. I thought Petit was the only place that got all these really nice picks, and it seems oh, like where Potomac gets no, no, no. a lot of the good ones. Yeah, Potomac is great, man. Uh, that's always one of my favorite spots in DC. Also MacArthur's, but that they don't their delivery stuff is not great if unless you're in DC. So yeah, yeah I, I when I tasted that man, I immediately thought like Telex is gonna be all about this this pour because it is it's got the peat, it's got the heavy sherry or the heavy, you know, port sherry fruit notes. You're gonna be you're gonna be in heaven with that one, man. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. So I was thinking we could shoehorn that in for our number one uh, of our yeah. uh, show, which is coming up. Oh yeah, that's going to be an awesome show. I was able, I was lucky enough to pick up a couple slightly peated, which Kelowna is not really known for trying. I'm glad they're trying it. Uh, yep. They're doing a slightly peated. I got two Jack Rose picks. One's a slightly peated uh, bourbon, and one's a slightly peated sherry hogshead yep. deal. So that's going to be really fun to do. And they're Jack Rose picks. I mean, if anybody's had any picks from Jack Rose, like you're you're in for some stellar stuff. I did a a whiskey tasting two weeks ago with. Uh, the Philly Whiskey Society with with Jack Rose, where we were tasting some of their Willet Bourbon pick, Willet Bourbon and Willet Rye picks. We're talking like wow. eight year old ryes. Oh my god! Wow! I did a Blanton show with them. Um, they did another tasting a few months back with the our whiskey group, and we did um, some of their Blanton's Bourbon picks, which just freaking amazing. So yeah, there there's I have supreme confidence that we're in for. A serious treat with those. <laughs> Have you already seen that new uh, the Rye R bag uh, that they yeah. just released? Have you seen the Rye over here yet? I have. I've seen it, but it's, oh. the, the it's sold out everywhere, and secondary market prices are stupid. They're like three hundred something. Oh, really? I'm not screw with it. I don't know what it, I don't know what the consensus is on whether how good it is or not. Uh, well, the, the, the good news is. That, I was gonna say the good news is I do have a way to get it. I'll just have to, I'll just have to see what I can do. But I'll, I'll definitely hold you something if I get a couple bottles. If you get it, I'll buy it. Yeah, let okay. me know. Let me know. I mean, yeah, of course I'm gonna buy it. I'm a degenerate art big <laughs> <laughs> Join the club. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm not gonna buy it. Every time I say this is the last time I'm gonna buy an art big committee release. Well, here you go. Uh, I mean, you, you can't on. say no to Mickey Heads, man. What's yeah. wrong with you guys? We've been talking about this too, about the the sh the small amount of good scotches that have a rye maturation or rye finish. I've had the Chivas, which was like, eh. I haven't had the Glen Alecky. The Spios. Uh, yeah, the Spios is Glen Morgie, which is it's very good. I think it's really good with the rye. This is not a lot, rye, a lot of rye. A lot of rye ones out there, and so the idea of an Ardbeg. Like I'm really interested to see how peat and rye would somehow work together because me too. I feel like the rye is just going to get drowned out, but I, I don't know. I mean, again, it I'll, depends on I'll level. Four hundred dollars to find out is what I'm saying. I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> I won't hoping that for the record, I won't pay that. But. If they use their like they have the they have that old blaz that I had that was only like a three to five ppm. If they do use that with the rye, I could see it working. But it will be interesting because they don't usually do a lot of it, really crazy experimental stuff like that. But uh, that Scorch is going to be interesting, too. They're supposed to have a new one called Ardbeg Scorch out here, I think, in March. That will be fun. I forgot. Speaking of Ardbeg, I did get one other thing. This is a oh, wow. independent bottling single cast from 1991. It's only 43%, which is a little bit lame. But, yeah, this was distilled in 1991. It is a 10 year old, or no, I'm sorry, it's a 12 year old art bag single cast. Wow. That's from, 80s art bag juice in there. Man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll get into this one at some point. 80s art bag juice, man, is something special because that was pre closed down after the 80s and they closed for a while. Yeah. So this would be, right, this will be like older, older juice. I'll, I'll, let me, let me try to get it out of this. 
Uh-oh. Very box, just so you can. I mean, that's a, you know your natural color if you ever. That's did very it. natural. For this 12, is a twelve-year-old yeah. bag. This is the label. Huh. You don't see the the great thing about art bags. If you do find an independent, they're really rare. Like Chieftains does a couple of them, and I've seen a couple here and there, but you don't see a lot of uh, independent art bags, do you? No. Uh, there's like a I think there's a couple of comics that I'm looking for. This will be. Yeah, this, I mean, oh, man, it's a freaking single, like, we got yeah, to fuck with this at some point. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Yeah, indeed. But we got something really interesting to get into right now, if I'm not mistaken. What's yes, this we do. on this bad boy? Let me open her up here. The, uh, like, uh, we, if, you, if you're just tuning in now, we've been looking at Glen Goyne. Uh, we did the teapot uh, dram before, and uh, now we're going to be looking at the Glen Goyne 21, which uh, is in the same series and uh, a good distillery. These, this uh, is the Ian McLeod Distillers. They do uh, Glen Goyne. They do Tamdu as well, if you're familiar with oh, Tamdu. They're from the same family, huh? Okay. Yeah, same, same guys on both, and maybe that's why they're both – Pretty decent quality, you know, sherry drams. Uh, I'm not sure why they have two different, completely different distilleries other than maybe environment, but um, they both do pretty good work. Um, this one is going to be 43%, which I wish it was 46, but I won't pitch too much. This is all first fill sherry that we're dealing with. We're not dealing with any secondary stuff or anything else, which is good. Oh, huh? It is first fill. This is definitely natural color. So what you get is what you get, which is a you know a good a good thing. The only thing that was really tough to find, I could not get specific details on it, so I'm going to assume that this could be chill filtered. Unfortunately, I did do lots of looking here and there, and I, I just could not find a definite yes or no on the uh, chill filtration. But that's really the only downside next to the 43 percent. I had a big swig of water in between and a little bit of a, a chip. So, yeah, I uh, I had a little bit of twelve. I've I've had a couple glasses of water. I feel like my palate is has tuned down a little bit. Um, I had a couple peanuts too, so I think we should be okay. There you so go. <laughs> twenty one years, twenty one years. Glen Goyne Core Range, forty three percent natural color, but probably chill filtered first full sherry. Yeah, that's a you know it's it's got a couple niches that we could ding it for already, but we'll yeah, have to take it. What did you? What is the cost of a Glen going twenty one? Oh, good point. It is. This runs about two eighty, so it is oh, on the higher oh, it, end. Okay, so it's not screwing around. Okay. Yeah, the the I'm I'm sorry, I take that back. That was I was looking at the Glen Levitt twenty one. No, this one is one seventy. Sorry, guys. Oh, one seventy. Okay, that's a big difference. Yeah, one seventy. Sorry. <laughs> I, yeah, one seventy. I can. We can talk. <laughs> yeah, sorry right. about that. The, the the I was messing it up with the Glen Levitt twenty one archive, and that's the one that was that's that's closer to the two eighty. Sorry about that. What a fantastic nose. Yeah, this is going to be uh, since I. Uh, to tell the tape you uh take uh, your time and do your thing and yeah definitely um that sounds great so immediately the nose smells like a very sweet elegant sherry so whereas the teapot dram a lot of similar notes but they were much more like aggressive and robust this more refined sweet dried red fruits nice vanilla a little bit of toffee Wow. I mean, just, I've said this before. The best thing about McAllen in most cases is the nose. And I feel like this Glen Goyne nose is working right in that same wheelhouse so far. I mean, it is just a decadent nose. There's a bit of milk chocolate, a little bit of oak spice. Everything's working harmoniously. I love it. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely this. This to me is if you're looking for a similar caliber nose to a McKellen 18. I think this is pretty close for a lot less of the money, which it is, is oh, great nose. Yeah, the yeah. fact that this is 120 dollars cheaper than a McKellen 18. I mean, well, first of all, you and I had our differences on McKellen 18, but right. this this might put a little 
uh, exclamation point on my on my point on that. But we'll yeah. see. It's not okay. Here's the thing: it's not as deep and rich as that McCallan 18 knows. It's not as deep, but it, uh, you know, there's not as much to it. That's but close. I'm telling you, there's a lot going on here, and it's it smells fantastic. Let me see what the ABV on This the, reminds uh, me of a Glenn Farkless nose a little bit, but sweeter, maybe even sweeter. Yeah, I think this the good thing about the Glen Goyne series that I do appreciate is they do have a nice, like a sweeter tone to their drams, which I actually prefer because I do like a sweet one. But if you were not a huge fan of sweet drams, it might be something to, to keep take note of. So, oh wonder, man, there wonder, is. I wanted to see what the uh, ABV on the 18 on the McKellen was just for a comparison on the. Uh, is it also 43? I just wanted to verify. Yeah, 43. So, yeah, I, I think the nose on this can hang with that McKellen 18 pretty damn close. I The nose on this is it's it's by the numbers in a great way, man. It's just really sweet. It's sherry. It's It just it smells like a nice, light, parfait dessert. It's great. I'm quite enjoying it. Wow, man, it's like a hot fudge sundae. Hmm. <laughs> Is like all if any of you have had Glen Going 21 before, I'm i this is the last of the core range uh that I've not had. So this will complete my core range age statement core range uh tasting of all of Glen Going stuff. I I quite like it. It's got a little bit of that kind of warehouse, you know, just that damp, damp basement kind of thing. Just a slight note of it on the edge. Yeah, yeah just a little bit. Hmm. I love the chocolate that's coming out of this. I'm getting it went from like a milk chocolate and now it's gone to like a fudge almost on the nose. That's wild, man. Do you get like a like a like an earthy soil note out of this at all? It kind of reminds me of like a mole, like a Mexican chocolate. It's got like a mole. Little bit of you hit it. You hit it. That's what it is. Mole. That's exactly right. And it's it's in the it's slight, but it's there. And you can once you once you smell it, I'm focused on it heavy right now. You're right. Mole is exactly right. Wow. I mean, I've I never heard that before. It's it's totally there. You hit the nail on the head, brother. I love that combination of the spice with the chocolate. It's like and it's not like a yeah. peppery spice, it's more of like a earthy coffee almost like spice. Yes. Earthy for sure. The coffee note, definitely. Ooh, I. This is. This is quite nice. I think I'm ready to go in for a taste. You got any more nose on this? The it, it, I do like the fact that it, it's got a nice complex nose, and I do love all the notes in the nose. I do wish that it had maybe a little more. More, more power to the nose. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only thing cool. that's kind of yeah. lacking on the nose for me. There's a lot of like stewed fruit, plum, like there's some raisin, the fig, the dates, maybe a little bit. But everything is, again, it doesn't have a ton of depth. It's a, it's all kind of like sugar coated. It's like you gotta really dig fruit. in and get it all sugar out. Plums, sugar coated everything. Yeah, like just sweeter, not as much like darkness, dark fruit notes to it. But they're there. Yeah. Even though, like, we're really enjoying this one, you do have to work to get all of it out of this dream. Yeah. That's the only thing I'm fighting with a little bit. For sure, for sure. But I'm with you, man. You when you <sighs> said no way, you hit the nail on the head. All right, let's have a little sippy sip. Launch of launch of all, everybody. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Oh, that finish. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's what's great on a really well aged scotch is man. It, it really oh. the finish was great on that teapot, but this one's gonna last, I think, a little longer. Yeah. Unlike the teapot. Which was very spicy and aggressive. This is very refined, elegant. It arrives for me at a very like medium mouthfeel. It's not too languid, but it's also not as robust as maybe you would, I don't know, expect. It's definitely no Klein leash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
a lot of red fruit, like dry mm. red fruit, caramel. The, but the dominant notes are caramel, vanilla, and that earthiness. It's like this dark chocolate coffee bordering. Again, you said mole. I can't keep – I'm going to say mole 25 more times. The finish on this, though, malted milk balls. Mm -hmm. Caramel, on the ass. Light cherry cola. Fruit, it's fruit and dark barrel notes just dancing around. It's a medium I, long finish. I can't believe this doesn't have a lot of bourbon. Like both of these yeah. drams feel like they should have bourbon cask influences, don't they? Yeah. God, cream soda. A root beer float. More root beer float than cream soda. You got a little bit of that kind of molasses, gingery, uh, Mm. A dark dark note to it, but then the creaminess of like vanilla, French vanilla, vanilla bean thing. Uh, hazelnut, again, hazelnut. And that's why I'm surprised that it doesn't have a bourbon cast because it's the, the vanilla notes on this and the smoothness, and, and it's got like a cola esque, Ooh, the cherry. Man, that word, that word applies so well to this. I mean, compared to the teapot dram. <sighs> Which of course was almost twenty percent more ABV, but like, wow, what a difference! I mean, this is a refined, elegant, not delicate, but I'm gonna. Well, we'll see how delicate it is when we put water on it. Um, I That's what through, I'm afraid of. I, I, I find that like I cannot really get the viscosity and like mouthfeel right until I get two tastes of it. Neat. So I'm gonna do one more here. Yeah, that's the only thing. I mean, thankfully, this is not doesn't feel ultra thin like the ten did for me or the um, some of the younger um, Glengoins, but it definitely has a really nice complexity. I think to the profile. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Those mole notes are kicking ass, man. It's like, it's like going to the best Mexican restaurant, having a carne, a, one of those carne <laughs> asadas, and then finishing out with like the best Mexican, you know, chocolate dessert you can get with hazelnuts on the side. On the second tasting, it's it's went away much further. Uh, like it's much more vanilla. I, I, yo, did you say this is all first fill sherry? Yeah, it's all first fill sherry, surprisingly. This is what's really interesting. It's 21 years old. I'm not getting a ton of dry fruit notes, which is usually the hallmark, the staple of a uh, you know, a sherry whiskey um, that's been aged. I mean, that's usually where it goes. I'm getting some, but it's not overbearing. The spice notes is all spice and you know, like the nutmeg thing is there, but then like hazelnuts too. With, a, with with me, like I agree, I don't get a lot of dried fruit, but I get a lot of different types of chocolate and different types of hazelnut yeah. with the spice level. It's like yeah. it, it's it's definitely a dram in its own realm. I haven't had one like this other than maybe the Bunahaven 18 is kind of reminiscent to me a little bit, but this is definitely more thinner than that. Yeah, I'm I'm a little more bullish than you on the mouthfeel here. Like I compared to the Glengoin 18, what I remember. I mean, I feel like the mouthfeel on this is much more just full flavored and oily and coating. I'm actually, oh, it is it is better than the 18 by far, that's true. Oh yeah, sure. no doubt. I, I'm just I mean, I mean mouthfeel wise at forty yeah. percent. I, I do feel like you're getting a lot more oak barrel influence but wow I, it's really interesting that there's no bourbon in this i can't get over the spice kick factor too without the bourbon you know at least a lot of oak yeah, or something yeah, the spices are all very like muted and harmonious muted is the word i want to use here but they're very they're not assertive like you're not being like it's nothing like the teapot trap it's no. nothing like anything at cast drink where like you're getting just punched in the face with like a heavy spice pepper note. Everything is very subtle. It's it's kind of working together. There's a, even a little bit of cinnamon, but I'm telling you, it, for me, it's oh, yeah. nutmeg. it is nutmeg up the up the wazoo, man. Oh yeah, nutmeg and allspice. 
Even maybe even coriander. Hmm. I'm going to go in for a little bit of water. I can get over how much it, the chocolate slash spice I get out of this. is insane. Cardamom, too, man. I know that sounds pretentious, but you know what I'm saying? Cardamom? No, cardamom, yeah. You know, it, it's, 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 it's definitely got it a lot. But you're right. It's not... It definitely doesn't feel like a talisker where it's in your face, like white pepper, black right. pepper assertive. This is more, yeah, there's like some caliente pepper. There's some, there's a little bit of cinnamon. There's a little bit of nutmeg. There's a lot of different spices, but they're all really well blended and it's all expected to work with the chocolate you're getting. It's, it's, it's wild. Wow. Wait till you put water on this. The, mustiness the musty oak the old wood the damp wood factor kicks up like five five points when you add water holy cow it's there it's, but it's still working great i mean is it enjoyable yeah i like it again the vanilla there's no citrus to be found maybe orange if it was anything but it, it's so slight it, it would be on the margins there's also tea, like uh, maybe a black tea or like an English breakfast tea. Yeah. But again, Chinese five spice. I mean, we're talking, again, like coriander. Like there's there's definitely some of that spicy, that, that those rounded spices, as I like to say. It's not like a sharp in-your-face spice. It's a rounded spice. That's one thing that is wild is that you, I do think I got more citrus on the teapot than I got get out of this one. Yeah. It's detectable, but man, you really have to dig to get any like 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 you said, I, I don't really get oranges or anything like that, but yeah, no, there's there's hardly any. I, you're I'm reaching for it. Yeah, it's like I, 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 maybe a little bit on the side, but it's definitely more the um, on the fruit side. It's uh, I, I guess I would God. Strawberry shortcake. Strawberries and the raspberries and maybe maybe borderline plum. It doesn't really get too currenty, but yeah, black I'm not cherries sure though. Plum. I don't get as much tart tart red fruit. More the black cherry though. Strawberry, black cherry, the plum thing. Well, yeah, more of the black cherry. Again, plum is like kind of a darker fruit. I'm not getting. There's just not a lot of dark dark fruit in this, but boy, this nose is fun. It's much more fun than I expected. And I'm going to go in for a little second taste now, so cheers. Mm. Wow, it's even more, um, mm -hmm. even more of the bourbon cast notes are coming out. <laughs> God damn. And it was not there. That's the weird thing about it. It's sherry. <laughs> the weirdest first fill sherry whiskey I've ever had. I'll tell you, I not a bad way though. <laughs> it's more, it tastes more like PX than it does Oloroso, or like maybe a Montalado, you know, like something in the middle. Yeah, I think the yeah, it's more like an Amontillado slash uh, Manzanilla. Manzanilla, that's Manzanilla. the one. Yeah. That's so this, almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. reminds me a lot of the Ardbug from Ardbeg. If you ever get a chance to have that one, this yeah. this one has got that profile okay. to it. Okay. And yeah. this one is definitely Manzanilla. Um, I happen to have a Bunahaven hand filled from the distillery little mini here. That's a Manzanilla ten year old, and I, you know, just for shits and giggles, yeah, see, I'm gonna put a little bit of this in the glass because I think you hit the nail on the head with that. Is if I'm thinking if I'm thinking sherry profile, it's definitely on the drier side. Mm -hmm. It's got some really nice flavor going on. It's it's definitely not overly sweet, but it, it does have sweetness to it. It's not too acidic, thankfully. Yeah, not at all. I'd say that's pretty close to. Um, gotta be. I'm hoping that you get the manzanilla. I hope you get kind of a similar. Uh, it's there. Oh. I'm also. I'm. I'm actually also leaning a little bit more towards like, I don't know, Sauternes. I don't know. I might. Be, I might be overthinking this, but I, I'm with you. Oh man, those chocolate notes. Yeah. Yo, this is. This is. Yeah. 
Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad at all. Um, I feel like I need to drink the rest of this sample just to finally get my bearings. I mean, I'm still a little bit on the fence about like where I'm going to land on this. I'm going to have another pour. Favorite. Which is good because a uh, 21 year old whiskey I shouldn't fucking know after two tastes. No? Yeah, I, I'm gonna have another pour myself because it is that good. <laughs> I love the fact. I mean, the only good thing about being at 43 percent is you can drink a lot more of this and not have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is so interesting. The Glen going 25, I feel like so much more sherry forward. This it blows my mind that there's no bourbon in this. Just like it blew my mind that Glen Scotia 15 had no sherry. Exactly. Like, it's like a reverse. It's got to just be the malt or like the, the distillate, their new make, that brings out these flavors, the nuttiness, the the whatever. But, man, that it's is. A reverse, it's a reverse doppelganger. <laughs> reverse cowgirl? Is that what you said? A reverse doppelganger. Oh. <laughs> reverse cowgirl, too. Wait, either way. <laughs> <laughs> Re reverse double gingers in reverse Calgill. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> wow. That's a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> That's the after hour show, bro. Oh, man. Love, love line with Telex and Malt. <laughs> you remember Adam Carolla and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dan Savage on it? We're going we're gonna to do Savage Love. Savage Love uh, whiskey cast. Oh, oh man. Oh. They, they need to send our ass over to Scotland. We would have a field day, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, all right, Alex. Uh, this one threw me a little bit for a loop. I'll be honest. I was walking into this very bearish when it came to what I expected, given the 43%, given that my experience with the 18 was less than interesting. This is a step up from that for sure. I'm I'm amazed there's no bourbon in this. Me too. This is a very sweet, and it's a very sweet whiskey. There are a lot of complexities that I think you can parse out. None of them rise to the level of like maintaining my attention long enough because when I go back to sip, I tend to just get overwhelmed with the sweetness again. But I'm not taking that away from this in any way. This is a really good, competent whiskey. Um, what did you say the price was? This was a one seventy. Okay, so if you're looking for like a nice higher aged whiskey and you kind of want to dive into it, I think this is a this is a good one. If your palate's ready for it, I, I would definitely make sure you've had a couple, you know, whiskeys in the eighteen range or whatever, just to like. And really know your palate. Like I think a lot could be missed here if you jump into it too soon. I'm I'm happy that like I kind of am at the point where I can my my palate can pick out some of these things. Uh, so I wouldn't rush into this one, but I think it's a good one to kind of introduce. It it's like a great gateway into uh, eighteen uh, older than eighteen year old scotches in that way. Um, I enjoy it at one seventy five. That's, you know, 170, 175. It's a really good price these days for a 21 year old whiskey. I am going to go, um, I'm going to go, this is tough. I'm going to go three, three, seven, five out of five on this, which means for me, I, I highly recommend you try this or pick it up. If you get it at a good price, you won't be disappointed. This is a really, this is a really good whiskey. It's much better than the 18. I think it's worth the extra 50 or 60 bucks for sure. Uh, over the 18, it's, it's not even a question for me. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll sit at 375 on this one. Well, um, yeah, it, it's funny. Thinking about all the, um, the notes, it's, 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 it's amazing. I'll agree with Eric that the, the fact that this does not have any bourbon cast influence to it, I'm, I'm surprised. It's first fill sherry cast type. That's supposedly what's all that this is. Um, it does remind me of the reverse of the uh, Glen Scotia 15 that we were talking about with the uh, lack of uh, cherry in that one, which is funny. But uh, this um, this is a very good find for me because I was the, like, uh, Eric, I, I tried the 10, the 12, the 15 I thought was outstanding. Can't find any more. Dabbled in the 18. It was kind of like, eh? 
You know, it's okay. It's pretty good. I mean, for you know, it's it's hard to find a really bad eighteen year old whiskey. But with this, this I think is definitely a big step up from their eighteen release. Um, if you are, you know, looking at both, if you can afford the twenty one over the eighteen, I would definitely shoot for the twenty one way before you would go for the eighteen. Um, if you can uh, get, you know, start off with the twelve, that'd be perfect. And then work your way up to this one, maybe. That would be a good, you know, if you had a 12 and a 21. I never had the 25. I can't base anything off of that one, but I'm sure that's uh, having this one and as good as this one is, it makes me less uh, fearful to, to save up maybe for a 25 at some point. Uh, maybe even a 30 that Dustin was talking about earlier. Uh, Dustin, uh, sorry if you've already mentioned it. What, did, what was your take on the 30 or 32? Did you uh, like it a lot, or were you kind of like, eh, on that one? Buy the 25 and then the rest of the bottles. Wow. He's a real huge fan of the 25, it sounds like. Um, with that said, uh, I, I know he wasn't a big fan of this 21, but I, I, I'm surprised that uh, – he didn't find all the little fun things that we had fun, you know, taking a look at it with the um, the spices and the sweetness with the savory chocolate notes and the medium fruit, red fruits that came involved with this. Uh, works with water. Don't need water to enjoy it. It's a great ABV for people that are starting out for older whiskey. If you are uh, getting into sherry, Scotch, this would be a great one to start out somebody with a, if they want to try something that's in the older um, range. I'm going to say, I, I have to agree, I'm going to knock them for the um, the fact that it's chill filtered. I don't like that. I'm going to knock them for the fact it's not 46%. 48% would be perfect. 46 is preferable. 43 to me is, is kind of, eh, but it is still a great dram, but I'm going to I'm gonna stay at three point seven five out of five. I think on this one as well. I'm yeah, kind of agree with you on that one, man. It's a, uh, it's really good. It's solid, but um, I don't know. It's it's it's. I've heard so many great things about the twenty five. I think I might have to save up and get that one down the road. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got someone from a. Uh, Bro, I'm drinking some proper 12 whiskey. Anyone have any good snuff videos to watch? <laughs> I think you're on the wrong channel there, man. <laughs> In, e either way, welcome to the channel. And uh, proper 12 is a whole other uh, uh, area there. Well, thanks so much uh, for uh, stopping by there, Gary. And uh, hopefully... Uh, you are going to be doing well this week. See you for now on that one. Dustin says the 21 is okay. The finish is great. The nose is, man, the palate is kind of light and dull. I think it's more to run at 86. Wow. I'm surprised you didn't enjoy the uh, the hot fudge Sunday type of nose there, but uh, to each their own on that one. He's talking to uh, Cohen about the uh, KNL. to see on that one well, mm. any final thoughts there Eric, before we I'm, I'm i'm happy with this one man i i i don't um i don't yeah i think this is totally competent i you know this is gonna be always gonna be one of those borderline whiskeys it's like if i see it at a good price so maybe i'll pick it up uh but uh you know uh i'm not rushing out to buy it either but That's where I'm at. Tell us, uh, I have also have zero idea where you're getting the bourbon on that one. It makes me think of batch variation on the uh, on this uh, on this uh, 21. Yeah, I wasn't sure if. Uh, hmm, let me see if uh, if there's a a year or some sort of way to determine like the. Uh, batch on this. Usually if you get your flashlight out you should always have a flashlight and a magnifying glass for people that can't see when you're looking at some of these bottles. But there is a code on the back and typically 
You're looking for an L. I'm not sure why Scotch bottles start with L, but uh, maybe somebody can enlighten me on the on the chat there. This is L thirty o four nineteen. Now, typically, the nineteen would signify this is a 2019 bottle, but I can't determine that for sure. Then they have a timestamp. I don't think that's really going to get me anywhere, but this is 300419. So do you remember, Dustin, which bottle uh, year that you had? If it was an earlier one than 19 or maybe a uh, – that very well could be, though. You never know with some of these things, with anything else. Um, the more crafty uh, whiskeys, they, they do suffer from batch variation. That's That's – Damn sure, so that could be part of it. Yeah, that is the only time to buy there. Always oh, something about the other one. Cohen agreed. I missed what Cohen said. Oh, the whiskey shop is not even close to Kindle on the whiskey selection overall. Okay. Same batch. Huh. I'm surprised, man. That's weird. I don't know. But we uh, seem to... Really enjoy that one, I thought. To a point. I mean, it's it's not like a neither one of us, neither Eric or I thought it was like a blow your socks off whiskey. That's why we didn't go above a four. But uh, you know, I thought it was above average, that's for sure. For you know, whiskey in general. I mean, mm -hmm. depends on what you're comparing. I'm I'm comparing this whiskey to all whiskeys, and to me, it's definitely above average. That's why I gave it a three point seven five. So yeah, I'm with you on that. I mean, I think and the price. Like, if you would have told me this was two fifty, uh, for me, you know, maybe this would drop to a three point five, if not a three point two five. Like, it's good. It's sweet. It's delicious. I appreciate the complexity. I think you were right that like this is a whiskey that somebody who is not, you know, if you're just starting out in the whiskey world, don't waste your money on this until you're ready to fully experience its nuances because its nuances do take some work as you were alluding to earlier. I, I mean, yeah, it's a good one. I, you know, uh, will it find a place on the shelf maybe at some point, but I don't know. You know, yeah. I think it's like, it's, it's definitely one of these things where to each his own um, it's got the quality and the, and the, the level of, uh, interest that that i think some people could be very intrigued by but at the same time i don't think that you know it, it's not blowing my mind in any way right he was asking me do i get a bourbon I'm flavor for a weird age so he's asking me if i got a bourbon flavor and i, I really do there, th this this has more i mean there's definitely sherry there, I mean, it's first fill. Of course, you're going to get some sherry notes in it, but there are also a boatload of bourbon type of flavors I'm getting from this. Yeah, like, like, I'll confess that I I don't know what about specific distilleries would bring out bourbon notes, and so like, I mean, I'm willing to admit to my own ignorance on that, but at the same time. This, I mean, I had the same thing, and I mentioned this earlier with Glen Scotia 15. Yeah. Like, I was like, how is there no freaking sherry in this? This is all ex bourbon. Maybe it's because of the quality and the, like, I don't know, man. These are just those things, those edge cases, you know? These are what they call the edge cases, right? In the, uh, you know, the casks that they just bring out certain things. And I, I don't, I, I can't make heads or tails of it. Uh, you know, if it's if it's exposing my own ignorance, that's fine. But um, it's a learning experience for me as well as anybody. So maybe their new make has uh, yeah, a yeah flavor. Right, right. very very possible. Right, very possible. I'll tell you, I didn't get that feeling off of some of their other stuff, but very possible. I think yeah, one is right. Yeah, I don't. I do not remember getting this profile from the eighteen. I, don't, I definitely don't remember getting. Like the 18 to me had like a very faint sherry profile without all these nice bourbon type of cast notes I got off this one. It was kind of weird how that, you know, works. I'm going to, uh, 
I'm going to revisit a good friend of ours from last week, which blew my freaking mind. Did you already – hold on. Did you already get – hold on, hold on. Did you oh, already get a 21 I didn't I, – I waited less than 48 hours after our tasting last week where I was like, I need this in my life. Let me, let me go get my bottle real fast. I'll be right back. Do it. Back. Do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Glenn Cadam 21. First of all, Glenn Cadam 13. Get it. Glenn Cadam 15. Get it. Glenn Cadam 21. Get it. <laughs> awesome. And uh, yeah, yeah, Telex. I, I went and grabbed a bottle, man. I was that impressed with this whiskey after the sample you sent me. I was. Wow. Uh, you must have I really liked the it. Internet and I found it again. Sub, was this was sub $200. And as a point of comparison with the Glen Goyne, this is probably you can find it in relatively same price range. Here's the difference: Glen uh, Glen Cadam 21, non-chill filtered, natural color, 46 percent. Glen Goyne 21 was natural color, probably non-chill filtered, 43. No, probably, probably was chill. Filtered. They say that's all first fill sherry. This, I believe, is all uh, it's all ex bourbon because I think that's basically how Glen Cadam rolls. And I will tell you this: this whiskey. Blew, blew our doors off last week. If you haven't seen it, y'all, go back and take a look at the show. Uh, we were both completely impressed with this. And uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pouring this as a point of comparison for a 21-year-old, relatively same, you know, uh, same That's a good idea. style. They're both Highland. It's a good idea because this one's I mean, going to have. This. I mean, that, that's ex-bourbon. But, like, talk about and a light that's different. And just to just to, to definitely paint the picture clearer, someone did correct me on the uh, twenty one being both sherry uh, and ex, uh, bourbon on the uh, the cask influence on this. Uh, they wrote to me on the uh, about the Can show after the, the fact. Thing? Say again. You're talking about the Glen Goyne? No, the uh, the Glen uh, the Glen Drone. I'm sorry, the Glen Cadam uh, twenty one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Someone uh, in Goyne. One second, I'm just pulling it up to see. This is a small correction that the Glen Cadam 21 is a combination of bourbon and the Oloroso sherry casks. It is a pure ex bourbon. They got the source from the Dramble and the whiskey base com combined together. Great yeah. video, guys. Love the Glen Cadam. So underrated. Was nodding my head through the whole video. <laughs> so they really enjoyed the video. They were just letting me know that it was both uh, bourbon and uh, Oloroso sherry casks on this uh, 21 here. Because when I initially looked at it, I think I probably was using the stiller as the uh, descriptor. Glen Cadam 21. Dude. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Yo, man. This. It's so so, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's I. It's I. <laughs> yeah, for some reason. Yeah, this is uh what do what do you, you I mean this is a four two five, if not or I, I maybe I gave it a four five and you were I think at the same level, maybe a tick higher. Dude, this whiskey is so good. Uh, I'm sorry, like the Glen going twenty one will in I here's what I think. If you did these side by side and you poured them for a random person. The Glen Goyne 21 would probably uh, more impress people who are just into sweetness for sweetness sake. This, I think the complexity and everything is just light years beyond it. It's so good. <laughs> yes, Cohen. <laughs> Cohen said Muser loves the Glen Goyne 21. I know, yeah. man. I was on my soapbox last week on that one, dude. I was like, yo, this whiskey is not playing. Yeah, for some reason, Distiller just has X bourbon as their uh, listing on the cast type. That's why I thought that was just it. But thankfully, that guy knows a little bit of uh, the inside and knows that there's some Oloroso sherry involved with this. And that's probably what makes it so damn good is it's got both the X bourbon and the, the sherry going on at the same time. What 21-year-old whiskeys do you like more than the Adam? <laughs> Well, let me pull up my little sheet here because I do have a little sheet. <laughs> You're going to have to because they're not going to come readily to your mind. I guarantee that. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, oh. 
The Aaron 21 was damn good. It was right. I, I think it was a tie with me on, mm -hmm. on this one, but it, it's very close. Uh, the only other malt that I thought that could compare with that is maybe the Brook Lottie uh, Black Arts 4.1. That one is that one's twenty three. That's twenty three years old though. I'm just going. I'm just, I'm just going through my notes here. Hold on. Um, the Holland Park eighteen I thought was really damn good. The Holland Park eighteen no, I would give. I would give for the Highland Park eighteen. Yeah, I get it. I got to revisit that. The um, let me look here. Um, the only other one I would even come close to this. Would maybe be this. You never had it, but there was a Springbank 19 podcast that I had. Mm. It was it was this caliber, but that's the only other dram I can equate to the Glen Caddam and the Aaron 21. What about, this, the old, what about that? The uh, old old Pulteney 21. The old, old Pulteney 21, yes, would be close, but I haven't had it in so long, yeah. and I don't have a way to do a comparison. I think I would prefer the Glen Caddam 21 to it, to be honest with you, but it'd, it'd be close. Got one. Oh, you bastard. Maybe Seriously? We, How we, the we, hell did we, you find that? <laughs> I've had this for a minute, man. This I pulled this from the, from the vault. I pulled this from the, the bunker. I haven't opened it, but maybe oh, it these days we have to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, I have a seventeen too. We should do a blind comparison or something like that. That would be fun. I have it I, sitting here because I, I gotta. I'm gonna take it back down to the vault, but maybe I should leave it up here. I do um, know a place that still has seventeen, but not the twenty-one. So that's that's a really good find there, man. So I'm thinking about twenty-ones. Uh, Redbreast 21 doesn't count because Redbreast 21 is going to be everything, and we all know that. I'm sorry. I'm, it's a judgment call I'm making. Uh, 21s. I got a Ben Romick 21, which I haven't actually even opened yet, so I can't say that. The Highland Park 21 does Ooh. not do this. Um, I do have an Aaron 21 back there. I don't think that beats it either. Um... I'm surprised you were, you didn't fall in love with the Aaron 21 like I did, man. That's I love the Aaron 21. The nose was like boring, but my god, the like the palate's insanely good. It's a great whiskey, but I don't think it's as good as this Glen Caddam. And the Glen Caddam's cheaper. Good point. That's true. I mean, for your Glen Going your... was really good, but I don't think the Glen Going is as good as this. Either. I think this Glen Caddam 21 is. I will say so far in our whiskey sure. journey. To, it, it, I will say so far in our whiskey journey together, and, and we're and Eric and I are going to be looking at a lot of twenty ones and twenty fives coming up. So stay tuned. But so far, the Glen Cannon twenty one is the best bang for your buck. If I included value in my score, the Glen Cannon twenty one so far would be the best whiskey. I have to say. Oh yeah. Because I, I mean, compared to the Springbank nineteen port cask, it's, that's a three hundred and something dollar whiskey so it's not even comparable to the prices that you can get from the uh Glen Cannon, you know. a few folks bringing up the the so when we're talking about prices a few folks bring up the anoc 24 and yeah that that's the, uh, right there man it's this, right there I was, last week, bro i was like this is one of those distilleries where like they don't have the huge name recognition so they're able to sell things at a novel price Dude, I will agree that Anoc 24 is the, the only one that really stands up to it. I think. I think the Anoc 24 is slightly better because it's a little bit richer. But that this is we're we're in quibbles. Stephen is right. The, the if you ever get a chance to have the older version of the 21, yeah, definitely yeah. take a look at it because I've heard it's really damn good. But good it's just question, Connor. Maybe it's just so hard to find. He's got an open bottle of that, and he'll send us some samples. We'll see. Holy shit, dude! If you so excuse my French, but if you do have some some old twenty one that you're willing to to let us have a little sample of, and that elusive Springbank twenty one that we will be trying at some point, I have to save some money up first for that. But does anybody uh, have the Longwell twenty one? Which one? The Longwell twenty one? Ooh. I bet that's tasty as hell. <laughs> yeah. Because we love our heavily peated drams, man. <laughs> this is true. But I'm telling you right now, man, 
This this Glen Catam twenty one. That's solid. I'm not sure how this. I mean, this cracks my top five whiskeys of the year for sure, and it's only February. I don't know what's going to beat this. <laughs> Well, I, I was thinking something like, similar. I try to make things accessible. I, I want to keep my number, my stuff mostly under a hundred dollars. But my God, man! I have, I have, I have something for you though. Wait, wait till uh, one second. Hold on, let me get rid of this message. Wait till you are with me on April the sixth. I think there might be a topper. Of the Glen Cadam Twenty One on April the sixth, I, I think I'm not, I don't want to I don't want to overpromise, but I, I I do really 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 like the Edradar Twenty One that we'll be taking a look at later. That's right, we have an Edradar Twenty One coming up, and man, are you in for a treat on that one? I, I can't <laughs> believe I got it for the price I did. It was it was a steal. It was Great crazy. Mercy. Yeah, I can't imagine. Um, I can't imagine. Uh, I'm gonna uh, run in, grab, take a quick real quick. I'll be right back. No problem, man. Man, I cannot wait till uh, oh, you guys have some of these that we're gonna have uh, later on down the road. Yeah, I'll agree, Andrew. The old Pulteney 17, the old version is great, the new 15 is really solid, too. I don't We'll get into the new 18 uh, when I do it with uh, Eric here later down the road. But, man, we're, we're, you're going for a treat on the old Pulteney show. So stick around for that one coming up. It looks like we'll be doing old Pulteney in June, but we might. You never know. But so far, we're definitely looking at that one in June. And I'll agree with uh, Stephen on that one. And the, the I would love to try the Spring Bank 21. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. Uh, the Lafroy 21, that sounds good. I would love, man. Oh, the 21 is a pass. Wow. I've got to mention that to uh, Malt when he comes back. That's amazing. That's surprising. 24 for $20 cheaper than the Glen Catam 21. Wow, man. That's saying a, a big exclamation point on that one, it sounds like. Have the 2020 long 21. Need to open it. I know someone that could help you with that. <laughs> all more 21. Oh, let me get you in here, man. Uh, a couple of things. Is that... anybody had the all more 21? Look at me. I'm already going back for more of this Glen Goin because or the Glen Cadam. Dude, fuck around and find out. That's all I'm saying. Fuck I will and and find out. This I will is killer killer i will answer your altmore 21 question in a second but let, let me get to the, the couple of things that that came up on the side here from the net pour of the glenn cadman 21 the, very similar to the enoch 24 is looking forward to seeing how it develops and comparing the two that would be a good uh, a good show in itself if you have both of those yeah, guys yeah but we all know man like look the glenn the enoch 24 is the big dick in the room but yeah, twenty four at two hundred dollars again. Price considerate. That 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 core nucleus of that heavy minerality and treacle uh, molasses toffee note. You, I think it it maintains its depth in a way that you don't get depth like that on the on the Glen Cadam. You don't, and I'm not saying that the Glen Cadam is a different whiskey, but the yeah, Enoch twenty four is. I, th I still think, again, it was my whiskey of the year for a reason, and I usually don't go high on the price for those things. Dude, that whiskey, at this price, get it now. Get it now. I would pay $250 for that easily. Get it now because that thing's going to be $350 bucks next year. You just know it. Long Road 21 is a pass from Dustin. Uh, I thought that was interesting. It sounds like uh, that he got the $24, $20 cheaper than the Lincoln 21, so that does say something. Steven's got the Longmore 21, but he needs to open it first. So he's got to let us know how it goes on that one. I have the feeling. This is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. I'm just going to say it right now. 21 is only good if you got the UK prices retail. Yeah, that's if you have to pay US prices, hell no. So I, I, I will. Oh, what, the Glen Caddam? 
No, he's talking about the uh, the Guan War Twenty One. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Agreed. He was seeing it. He was seeing it was a pass, and then Steven said he had a twenty twenty version of it that he needed to open it. And uh, Justin was saying that the twenty one is only good if you got the UK prices on retail. If you have to pay US prices, hell no. Dude. Did ooh wow, Donner did the twenty one and the Anna twenty four side by side four times. Always a matter of personal taste, but Anna always won it for me. Wow, I'm surprised. Lord. Donner Pass knows, man. Donner Pass, we had many a good conversation about that Anok 24. I'm telling you, man, that Anok 24 is. Have two, and we'll open one and sample it out and sell another one if I don't like it. Wow, that's awesome, man. Steven's got the Longmore 21 that we've been talking about, so we might have to take a look at that. Yeah. yeah I never had a Longmore 21, man. 21, man. As I said earlier, fuck around and find out. Get yourself. The fucking Glen Caddam 21. This is a sub $200 21 year old whiskey, y'all. Hello. Steven's got a lot. Of, hold on. Steven's got a lot of the older Highland Park 21s. He's willing to open another one that maybe later on and send us a sample. That'd be awesome, um, man. I'll gladly, I'll gladly send you something in uh, to reciprocate. Absolutely. I'll yeah. tell you, I have a Glen. I have. This is the first release of the Highland Park 21. We did a show on this, Telex. This is the all full sherry one. This is the August 2019. It's fantastic, but I'm telling you, it's also 300 some dollars. It, yeah. is, it is nowhere. And look, I mean, this is all you need to know. Look at how that's presented, and then look at how this is presented. That's all you there need. There you go. Say again. I said, same with the Anak. Yeah. Um, Steve was saying he hasn't had the Lafroy 21s. Dustin likes the Lafroy 21s. Yeah, that one's hard to find. It, it does exist, but it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to find. Better than the 25, he thought. So I'm going to look for the Lafroy 21 if I can find it. That would be awesome. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he's got the moved on to the Kilhoman Batch 3 ver red version. Interesting. wonder what that is. What, what cask is that, uh, Daniel? If you get a long one, twenty the twenty twenty is much better than twenty nineteen. That's I good to know. Four bottles of this and just hide them in my basement. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, bro. The, the, because you know this is not going to be this cheap in two years. You just know it. It's two twenty where Daniel is. How much did you have to pay for yours? I paid like one sixty nine, but wow. I, would, I would pay two twenty easily. This is easily a two hundred dollar whiskey, man. I agree. It is that good. It's not even close. I, I yeah, I would do it. Do it without hesitation. Yeah, definitely, Richie. It's under twenty two hundred for sure. I found it for under two hundred. Sure. This should be your next purchase. <laughs> he said it looks from from the eighties, but I know which is why you should trust. It's still Look, good, man. <laughs> you know, here's another thing. I mean, tell me if you notice the similarity. Here's the Anak twenty four. This is a twenty four Anak. Look at this. It's just a fucking tube. It's the same tube as the. That's 18. all you need. It's That's all it. you need. Yeah. Still filtered, natural color, forty six percent. Hey else? Malt, hey Malt, do you need a wooden box that's filled with gold and all sorts of crazy ass shit to enjoy the whiskey? Say fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need all that bullshit. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the Enoch twenty four. This is the Glen Cannon twenty one. And just for point of reference, and I'm not hating on Highland Park. But this is the Highland Park 21. And this is $100 more. I mean, I'm just saying. And it's not there. That's, that's exactly right. It's like we don't need our boxes to do fucking cartwheels and bullshit to yeah, be man. a good whiskey. We don't want it to do that. We want it to just be good whiskey. That's all we care about. And this is why, like, we talk about this stuff. And I, and I hope that, you know, through our conversations, we're sharing some of the things we've learned. And, you know, of course, we're learning – probably more from everybody else than we are. But like, yo, if there's something that's becoming a little bit abundantly clear is that there are heavily, there's some really good aged whiskeys that don't feel like they need to floss it in order to sell bottles. And they're way cheaper and they're most likely better. Thank God. I.e. Anok 24, i.e. Glen Cadam 21, i.e. Even Aaron 21, which has a big ass box, but nonetheless, yo, these are coming in at a good prices. If you want to get yourself into an older whiskey and really explore and 
and challenge your own flavor and your own palate, these are great whiskeys to do it with. And they're not going to break your bank in most cases. Now, of course, times are shitty. COVID-19, all that. Like, I get all that. Keep them as a North Star if you have to. These are the things you're going to get when things get right, you know? Like, these are these are the kind of fucking whiskeys that working class folks who maybe want to splurge a little bit on a on a good bottle of whiskey will be able to get their hands on eventually and not break their bank and not spend three hundred dollars on an eighteen year old Macallan. Like, yeah. yeah, that's true. I will agree with you there. Whiskey, Don't spend three hundred dollars for a good nose. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that's definitely where it's at there. Oh man. Andrew Page made a great point. Yeah. International whiskey shop in in in, in Connecticut, y'all. They ship everywhere in the US, even prohibited states like Pennsylvania. And they got this bad boy for a buck eighty nine. This is more this is cheaper than a spring bank eighteen. Isn't that crazy? And and this it's actually better, which is kind of scary yeah. to say, but it, it really is better. Buy it without education. <laughs> Save your pennies. <laughs> you want a good fucking scotch that's going to really push you to to find subtlety and complexity and challenge your palate. Dude, Glen Chatham 21, man. It's And it's enjoyable. You can enjoy this without having to think about it, and then you can also spend your time thinking about it and find all sorts of stuff. It really, it's challenging but not demanding, and that's what I love about this whiskey. Yeah. I really, I tasted this for the first time last week. It's been seven days, Telex, and I got a freaking <laughs> bottle of it here. That's I was what... surprised. I've never seen anyone buy a whiskey that fast in my life before. <laughs> Dude, I wasn't. You were fucking around. <laughs> I was on the internet the next day, brother. I was like, I need this. I need this. I need this in my life. There, I can't not have Glen Cabin 21. I mean, the 13 was freaking good enough the the glen yeah. team it's a 70 dollar bottle it's great but man i'll tell you the 21 is fucking killer man no i agree of, of all the whiskeys that i've kind of brought sent, sent you samples of that was the one that i was really excited about cuz i knew how i mean not just me but how other people really really enjoyed it that were like clamoring for like how underrated it was so hopefully you know we won't see the prices go skyrocketing but <laughs> we, we do want to get you guys you know uh you know really? the good i'm telling you man there are distilleries out there and and you know this more than anybody like i came across them just organically <laughs> just like you did like the anok like anok like glen Cadam, like ben romick mm. there are distilleries that are putting out really quality stuff that aren't being you know overly priced like you see a lot of the stuff we go for oh we just be, are we just beginning man I, I can't wait to get you some really high-end blad knock stuff it's gonna it's gonna make you flip your shit it's gonna be insane oh, yeah man it, let's, it's, flip, let's flip some shit it's some of the like this this balvany 21 portwood is no joke man it's gonna be i think you're gonna really enjoy that one no homie let me tell you about let me tell you something about balvany you, before you go, do you already have that that port uh, the the twenty one port with from me, right? You already have a sample. Of that, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I got it. Yep. I just want to make sure you already had that one. Go ahead. I got sorry. a Galvany twenty one traditional oak single barrel. Ooh, damn! <laughs> so we're gonna have to try that at some point. I don't know if it's gonna be nearly as good as the portwood, but uh, hey, I'm, I, I I'm not I'm not I'm not here to battle on that one. <laughs> no, it's gonna be fun. But yeah, for real. I mean, if you take anything away from Telex and I tonight, apparently, I'm you know, I'm at the point of the night where I make broad declarations. Save your pennies. Get yourself some Glen Cadam Twenty One. Get yourself some Anoc Twenty Four. These are both. You could get both for under four hundred dollars if you played your cards right. Yeah. And you're done. I mean, you're you're gonna be like, these are these are some of the most quality single malt you'll taste at prices that these days are like borderline criminal. Yeah, and it really is. Thank God they still are. Please don't change them on our account. <laughs> no, do I we're gonna we're gonna you know 
people are nympho for info right now. So we're gonna fucking share it. Yeah, dude. save your ripples. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta get outside of here. I gotta hit the loo before I explode. But I really, really appreciate all you guys coming in and and Malt stand, stand by after the show. I'm gonna yeah, yeah. send gonna, you a text and try to figure out how we're gonna meet up on our next little excursion for for juices. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, hope everybody enjoyed the show. Before you guys leave, do give a thumbs up to this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, we appreciate it. It does more than you think to uh, bring attention to the show and share <laughs> your info as well as ours with everybody else. Um, we appreciate the support. And we will be back next week. And let me, Thanks, just, Daniel. Let me just share a little something, something about what's coming up next week. We're getting into some Glenn Livet. Oh, yes. Everybody knows, but may not know about some of the releases we're going to be talking about. We're going to be doing a Glenn Livet Oloroso Nadura, which means natural uh and also a glenlivet 21 year old in the second hour so we got some interesting uh the archive up. we're gonna be getting some lagavulin after that and some long road so we got a bunch of great shows coming up for telex and malt show subscribe to telex if you haven't give me a sub to at malt news or whiskey reviews if you haven't and do give us that thumbs up and uh we will see you next tuesday be there or be square, bitches. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Much love, everybody. Stay safe, be well, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks, guys. Salon Shavah from everybody.